Have you ever wondered if the woman you're dating might be a little unstable or just a little too emotional, but you're not really sure because you're thinking that maybe you're the problem? Or maybe she's telling you that you're the problem, that's why she's unstable, or maybe you're just not doing the right thing, or maybe you're not giving her the right kind of attention, or maybe life just seems to happen to her. She seems to have this string of bad luck. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you the seven warning signs to know if your woman is emotionally unstable. Warning sign number one. Excessive jealousy. It's this feeling that comes up because you're trying to protect your mate. It's mate protection. You want your mate to be only devoted to you and not be distracted by somebody else. Why? Well, you don't want to raise somebody else's kid. That's generally what it comes down to for you as a man. But for her, if she's jealous of you all the time, she's worried that you're gonna go, of course, see or pay attention to another woman and then all your resources are gonna go somewhere else instead of to her. And so excessive jealousy is defined as her being jealous for no reason. Of course, if you're actually flirting with somebody and you're actually paying attention and you're kind of secretly liking that attention, that is not excessive jealousy. That is, she's being jealous for a reason because, well, you are pulling energy out of the relationship. But if she's just jealous for no real reason and you're just going about your business and she's like, I don't like you going to the gym or I'm afraid of this coworker, I don't like your secretary, that's excessive jealousy. And so if you're dating somebody like that, you're just gonna have to tell them like, look, I'm true to you and you're just gonna have to trust me. And if they keep pushing it on this, you're gonna have to start setting some boundaries. And it's not your job to make them less jealous. It's their job to deal with their jealousy. You're just living life the way you were living life. You're just operating the way you operate. And that's how you wanna live. And that is not for you to change yourself just because this other person's getting jealous. So if you're woman, with a woman and she says, hey, I don't like this person that you're dating and you start standing up for yourself and they escalate, they start getting really crazy and amped up about it, realize you're with somebody who is unstable and you probably are going to have to address this sooner rather than later because what you tolerate, you encourage. And every single time you allow this to continue and you keep doing less and less things so that she starts to not be jealous, you're going to see that it's always a black hole. It's never ending and she will never feel secure because the problem's within her. It's not with your behavior. And so if you are honestly going through life in the way that you feel like you should, and she's still jealous about it, realize that that jealousy is excessive. An emotionally unstable person is gonna have frequent and wild mood swings. Now, it's one thing to be upset. It's one thing to be sad. It's one thing to be angry. But to go from like raging out to crying, it like in the same day, and this happens all the time, that's uncommon. Now, even if your wife is pregnant or she's going through some sort of hormonal shift, it's not an excuse for her to just act like this, act like somebody who has no emotional control over themselves. She's a grown ass woman. She has just as much control over herself as you do, and she should hold herself responsible in such a matter. But if she's having these huge emotional wild swings, I mean, that right there is the definition of somebody who's emotionally unstable. But the problem is they'll blame you for it. And so the thing is, it's not necessarily your problem, or well, it's your problem, but it's not your fault that they became this way. And so anytime they have these huge emotional swings, like one minute they're just super angry, the next minute they're crying, the next minute they're jealous, the next minute they're sad, the next minute they're just irritated and they'll say things like, oh, you just ruined the day. And oh, it's always this way with you. And they start throwing this at you. Realize that this is emotional abuse. You shouldn't take it. You shouldn't be in that presence of that person while this is happening. I know if it's your wife or something, it gets a little trickier, but just know what that is. Just knowing what that is can help you immensely. Just realize that you're probably not gonna have a good relationship with them. So emotionally unstable women, and really anybody, they suffer from a lot of lack of accountability. And so everything that they're doing, all the stuff that's happening in their life is your fault. So there's no accountability. You can't actually have a conversation with them and say, hey, I'd like you to change this thing because I feel like, you know, you're being overreacting, you're angry about things, or hey, why didn't you do what I asked you to do? It becomes a problem and you're always at fault. It's always your problem, you're the problem, you're the problem, every single time. And then it becomes this thing where it's like, well, I can't tell her anything, you can't tell her anything. And this will become a problem where she takes no accountability for anything because an emotionally unstable person isn't taking accountability for their own emotional state. And so when you're with somebody who won't take accountability, they won't apologize, they won't say they're sorry, and they won't make changes after the fact, you're with an unstable person, and it's just not gonna work. Somebody who's emotionally unstable is going to be usually a very big manipulator. They manipulate in two ways. One is they'll play the victim. It's poor me, all these things are happening to me and I can never get further in life and this is a terrible day and I wish people would care about me and I wish my kids would call me and I wish, and it's just always this thing, always something else, always something where they're this helpless person and they have no agency or control over their life and they need somebody, you, to come in and save them or somebody to come in and save them. They don't get enough money 
from the government or they can't use the machine at the gym because somebody's always on it and they come in there and they try to get you to feel bad for them. They feel like, oh, well, this person's getting the short end of it. And the thing is, they're living the same thing as you are. Sure, people get victimized sometimes, but you get to choose if you're a victim in that space or not. And so as a guy, you probably look that you're like, I'm not a victim. I don't look at myself as a victim, but then why do you look at her as one? And so they're always gonna play this game of victimhood. That's one type of manipulation. The other one, and this is, I mean, there's lots of different types, but these are the big, big main points. The other one is they're gonna rage out. And by the raging out, they're gonna, you're gonna be like, okay, hold on, whoa, oh, oh, it's okay, I'll just, and then you'll capitulate because you don't wanna go through this crazy, heavy emotional space. And so their heavy emotions, their unstable emotions are the weapon that they use in their manipulation. And they do it because it works. And it works very well against guys who try to stay reasonable and they're not really accustomed, their nervous system just isn't accustomed to dealing with heavy emotions. And so when you're in a situation where everything blows up all the time and you're not accustomed to dealing with heavy emotions and colliding with those emotions, right head on and being able to deal with it with a collision and be able to definitely maneuver these manipulations, you're gonna just capitulate. You're gonna collapse under the weight of this because it's exhausting and you don't wanna deal with it. And so the big mistake that guys make is they keep putting themselves in the presence of this manipulation instead of just being not there. She talks badly about her exes. They can't all be terrible, but even worse, that means that she's picking these people. She's picking these people over and over and over again. And so then she's saying she complains about them over and over and over again because she's still dealing with the issues. Or she's trying to manipulate you to tell you how to not be. And so if she's always talking about how bad her exes is, again, remember, she picked these guys. She picked them for a reason. And if she's still complaining about them, she hasn't resolved those issues within her. And at the same time, she's most likely training you how to operate with her. For this manipulation to work, they have to be overly dramatic. Just saying it regularly isn't usually enough to elicit the kind of response that they want because what they're trying to do is trying to get you to take action for them. And so they're gonna be overly dramatic about everything. Oh my gosh, nobody ever cares about me. My kids never call. That guy's a jerk. And so they're trying to elicit you to be the flying monkey, as a wicked witch would have, so that you go and do things for her. She'll play the victim and she'll just be overly dramatic about stuff so that you will pivot and move. If she's not overly dramatic, you might not take it seriously enough and you might not move as fast as she wants you to. And so she has to lay it on really thick. Why? Because most people don't want to deal with it. They don't want to deal with it. They have to feel like it's immediate and it's pressing right now for you to make that pivot, make that shift for her. And so they're gonna be overly dramatic about everything because they want you to feel like they're a victim. They want you to feel like they're special and important in this way. And they, want, they feel significance from it. An emotionally unstable person is gonna have boundary issues because they're not thinking about you, they're thinking about all the crazy going on in their head and everything is about them. Everything is about them. Everything is about their emotional state and what they have to do to get around it or get over it or the victim or raging out or something. And so it's never about you. Because it's not about you, there's always these boundary issues. They're always going over your boundaries. They're always gonna be late. They're always gonna be pushing your buttons. They're always gonna rage out. And you say, hey, I don't like you raging out on, on me. And they'll just say, well, and then they'll just come up with another excuse and make it your fault. And then the manipulation game starts. And so in this place of having no boundaries with this person, you can't do anything about it. They're in their head all the time and everything is about them. And so you're never going to have boundaries with this person. And even if they do, even if they say, yes, yes, you're right. I'm not going to do that again. They'll forget. Why? Because their emotional state overruns everything. And so again, being with somebody like this is near impossible. All right. So those are the seven warning signs and Maybe they're not even a warning sign. Maybe it's just, I'm in the middle of the shit sign. If you're in that kind of relationship where you're having to deal with any of these things, you're just gonna have to get out. It's not your job to fix this person. It's their job to fix themselves. Just like it's your job to fix yourself. Nobody's looking to save you. Why is anybody looking to save them? It's not that we don't care. It's just that it's impossible because they don't care about themselves. They don't want to work on themselves. Why? Because it's too hard. To them, it seems like it's impossible. And you've seen it yourself. You can't talk to them. You can't tell them that they are the problem. They already know they're the problem. They're looking for somebody to save them. The thing is, nobody can save them. You can only save yourself. You can only be, you have to be present for your own salvation. And so you, if you get into a relationship with an unstable woman, if you're with somebody who's a borderline or sociopathic or deal with narcissism, you're going to find a lot of this emotional instability. And again, it's not your job to fix them. I can't tell you the number of guys who come through to betray the badass program who were dealing with borderline 
people who are bipolar, and they try to save these women, and it just doesn't work. Because it's not their job to save them. The guy thinks that if he just saves this woman, if he can be there, be everything she needs, then she'll feel better, and that she'll get better. And the thing is, you can love somebody, but if they don't love themselves and they don't take responsibility for their lot and what they're doing, then nothing will ever change. It's the same with drug addiction. And so you can't, you can't do it. And so eventually these guys finally see that this person is going to make their lives hell and that they're going to fall into this place of just desperation and it'll destroy their entire family. God forbid if you marry somebody who has these problems. So if you are finding any of these warning signs in your relationship, just realize you probably need to start working on your exit strategy. And I don't like to say that lightly, but in some of these cases, it can be really fucking bad. And so I don't want that for you. I want you to be able to stand into your power and I want you to rise up and I know you're better than this and I know you can do more. Now, if you like this video, here's another one on the green flags you should be looking for for somebody who would be a good wife. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you wanna see more.